go away. Same as Conker, mate. Absolute minter. Stay tuned to the end of this video and you'll have a chance to win a nice little edges bundle. Well, you join us today at Blasford Hill Fishery near Chelmsford in Essex. It's a day ticket fishery. I won't say too much for now because I want to get my kit out and I want to get down to the lake, find a swim and get fishing. But I will talk to you later about exactly what we're going to be doing. I've just left my barrow up the bank. The lake is quite busy. Um, one of the areas I fancy looks like it's a bit sewn up, but I spoke to the owner and he reckons this swim would be a good shout. It's nice and quiet, there's no one else fishing around here. So if I keep it relatively stealthy, I might, might do all right. So what I'm gonna do for now is I've just got my mat with me. I'm gonna drop it in now, have a little bit of a walk around just to see if there's anything else that grabs me. Um, and we'll go from now. I've had a little bit of a look round. I've ended up coming back into the original swim. I chucked my mat down in. Um, did see a fish in another area, but it's a little bit busy. Um, so I've settled for a little quiet corner. I'm getting the rods ready now. I'm gonna go through today a couple of sort of old style, old school methods if you like. I'm on a busy day ticking water, as I've said. And uh, yeah, just see if they give us any kind of edge. So as I said, I'm getting the rods ready now. And then what I'll do is I'll go through some of those sort of old school style methods that I'm using later. Right, well the rods are out now, so I'm fishing. Uh, as I said before, I'm here at Blashford Hill Fishery in Essex. Never fished here before, but I've heard a lot about the place and it's kind of been on the radar for a few years for me to actually have a go on it. And the reason for that is because it's got some absolutely belting carp in it, some real stunners in here. Uh, they go up to high 30s as far as I'm aware, and I think there's a reasonable stock. It's not a big lake, but it is a busy lake. Uh, I'd say it's probably three to four acres. It's got a few islands on it, breaking it up. Well, I've just made a brew, as you can probably see. So I'm gonna finish this off, and then I'll run through some of the rigs I'm using and sort of the way I've approached it. As I said earlier, I'm using a couple of sort of forgotten methods. The first one's more of a rig, really. We, we call it the half wivy rig. It's a pop-up style rig much like a sort of short hinge or a runny rig, but without as much metal work on it, etc. Really effective for me, like in years gone by. It fishes as a pop-up, but you can also fish it. It doesn't need to be really, really buoyant. So you can use smaller baits on it and have it sort of kicked over so it sits more like a claw. And it works really well fish like that. The reason I'm doing that is there's a lot of debris. I'm fishing around the edges, fishing down the margins, and there's a lot, lot of debris around there. So I just want to make sure that my bait is just presented at just away from that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you how to tie this rig up. First of all, take a spool of Cortex coated braid. I'm using the tungsten version here because I like the additional weight within the hook length. Now strip off approximately three to four inches of the coating. From there, cut off nine inches of the hook length, leaving approximately a foot in total. Now take a wide gate barbless hook. I'm using a barbless because it's a barbless hook raw on here. And you're gonna attach the hook with a simple knot this knot. With the hook attached, you want approximately an inch of the uncoated braid behind the hook. Now take your wivy sleeve and cut off just under half of the narrow end. Now slide your wivy sleeve up and push it over the eye of the hook. 
With the sleeve now in position, trim off the tag end from the knotless knot and attach your micro ring swivel. With your ring swivel in place, now add your hook bead to secure it. Now it's just simply a case of tying a loop in the end of your hook length to attach to your swivel. Now add your chosen hook bait by flossing it on. To complete the rig, just add either putty or a quick change pop-up weight to balance the rig out. Well there you go, that's the half withy rig. As you can see, it's quite an easy rig to tie and you can see why I'm using it. As I said, I'm fishing the margins and there's a lot of debris out there. Well, midday, sun's out, high pressure and out of the blue, one's ripped off. Yeah, really wasn't expecting it to happen right now. And uh, I had just had a liner on the rod, which obviously had certainly encouraged me that there was fish out there. So I've seen a few and I've seen them up on the surface. But after speaking to the owner, Apparently zigs just don't particularly work well on here, so I've tried to persevere with margin spots and uh, I've put this one relatively tight to the island, again in shallower water, and uh, that's the rod that's ripped off, so yeah, fingers crossed, it goes in the net, it's certainly shot off like a train. Well, like I say, it went off like a train. I've got it in relatively close now. Keep that line tight, because I've got barbless hook on, obviously. Got the longer longer net out purely to get over this the, the swims are flooded so just a little bit of an advantage having it out a little bit further so it doesn't want to come in at the moment it's really rucking again not seen it yet yeah, you can just see the little pink bait popping out his mouth it's a right corker looking at that i don't know how big he is but again it's that's definitely side doesn't doesn't matter on that one but it's still a reasonable fish as well. Woohoo! Bash! <laughs> Sid. Woo, that's a relief. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's a 20 pounder. Real big plated linear. Right result, well pleased with that. You see the little rig in there? doing its work. Yes. Right, let's get the uh, mat sorted. Woohoo! That do, innit? Bring his out. There he is. A little half with it, lead stumped. What you got? 23 in the bottom. Yeah. yeah. Over there. Okay. <sighs> right, well there you go. The reason we come to Blashford to give it a go, some absolute stunning fish in here. And you can see this is a real minter. Well pleased with this. 23 pounds on the nose. I suppose size is irrelevant really, but it's still a good weight. Yeah, come here on a pr real pressure day ticket water. Use what's quite a dated rig now, but still a really effective rig, which I think has proved to show it. You know, like I say, very pressured. I have seen it all. As far as I know, since I've had the rods out, I don't think anything's been out. So, well pleased with that. Well pleased with that. Go on, off you go. Go on. I'll wide across the back there. What a lovely fish. It's always good to see them swim off. Lovely. Well, you just seen me slip that fish back and that was caught on the half withy that I showed earlier. So I'm really pleased to have actually caught a fish on that. One of the other methods I said, I explained earlier I was using a different method, is a paste bomb. A paste bomb is very similar to a method feeder, but it's just purely lead. 
Uh, so it, it casts further and it's got better self-hooking properties and perhaps a lighter method feeder. Now all I've been doing with that is just smearing some cell paste around it and then just squeezing a few fine pellets around it and fishing that. Really good effective way of giving a lot of scent off into the swim but not a lot of food. Now what you can also do with that is you can scull some pellet and use it just like a method feeder. It's a really effective way. Again, works well in flowing water so it's a real good method for river carp. And again, like I say, it's very quick and effective. So rather than use PVA bags, if you don't really like doing that, it's, again, it's a really good way of presenting pellet close to your hook bait very quickly. Well, it's getting late in the afternoon now. There's, as far as I know, there's been nothing else caught. Um, there was a couple of fish came out when we got here this morning. I've obviously had one middle of the day today. And it's kind of now it's the time where I've got to decide whether I'm going to move or whether I'm going to do the night in here. And quite honestly, I might as well stay here. It's, like I say, there's fish still milling around the area. They don't seem to be in the numbers they were, but there's no evidence of moving elsewhere in the lake. So I think it's as good as bet as any. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the house up for the night, get some food on, settle down. Well, as you can see, sun's just coming up. Real quiet during the night. I've been laying there awake since about five, just watching the water. And uh, yeah, completely out of the blue, the middle rods are absolutely ripped off. Did see a couple of fish when we were sitting there last night in the area. But to be honest, it was by the right hand rod, so it's been really quiet down this, this margin. It doesn't, it doesn't look that big actually, look at this little common. Let's get that out of the way. Oh no. Do. Yeah, boy. <laughs> I'll have that one for a wake up call in the morning. Not that I was awake, not that I was asleep anyway, but we'll call it a wake up call. Well pleased with that. Two fish now. To be fair, the session's only going to be what, 28 hours, something like that, I suppose, fishing time. So, yeah, really pleased with that. See where it goes. 16, 11, 16, yeah, 16, we call it 16, 11. Well, here's the result of the early morning bite. Just had a cup of tea to warm my hands up. Sun's coming up now. Yeah, cracking little fish, 16 pound 11. Yeah, well pleased to get another one after a quiet night. Again, this one filled to the half withy. So I'm gonna get the rod back out now and come back with a little update. There you go, clodding off nicely. Lovely. Well, I've just slipped that fish back. I've got the kettle on now. Um, one of the things I did want to say, there's more of a tip really for fishing busy day ticket boards, which this is, and it'd be line concealment. Um, now, obviously there's lots of ways you can conceal your line. Backleads is obviously a very good option. Um, me personally, I'm not too keen on using backleads. 
So what I do is I use fluorocarbon mainline. Now there's no leaders on here either, so it's a leader band, so could use tungsten tubing, would be another option. Um, but what I find is I use the 19 pound transcar key, which sinks like uh, absolute brick. So I'll fish it with semi-slack lines. So I know even at sort of 20 yards on a semi-slack line, the majority of that line is on the deck. So I'll, I'll literally just slack it off, let it sink, and just tighten it up to a semi-slack line. Now most fluorocarbon lines, are completely clear. Uh, what we've done with ours is we, trick, we create, put a bit of colour in it and created a trans car key basically. Now the, the advantage with that is if you put it on the deck you can't see it but if, you, if it's up in the water you can't see it either so when you get a bright sunny day with a lot of fluorocarbons because they're clear they end up acting like laser beams. Oh just turn that off let the smog clear. <laughs> yeah they end up acting like laser beams so with that, it's amazing that little bit of colour takes all of that out and you just can't see it. Right, competition time. You've seen me using the half withy pole rig and as a prize, I'm gonna give away all the components to make that rig. To win this prize, you have to follow these three simple steps. The first two is to like this video and subscribe to our channel. And the last step is to answer this very simple question. What is the name of the mainline fluorocarbon that I'm using? So pop your answers in the comments below, make sure you like and subscribe, and we'll pick a winner within seven days of this competition going live. Well, the iron rod's just gone off again. Just packing up, really. Last little bit of time left, and uh, Again, much like yesterday, completely out of blue, middle of the day, it's torn off. Luckily, I've got it, got it away from the island, it's then kited right and got around the island, it just caught on there for a minute, and it's, I've managed to sort of uh, pull it off, luckily. Whew, that was a little hectic moment now. I thought there was one last opportunity before we called it a day. much as anything because a bike came out there in the middle of the day yesterday from the same spot so he's in <laughs> happy with that so a nice little session that well you can see the wivy in the stuck in the side of the net there it's actually I looked yourself in a in a barber so it just come out but there you go that's it Well, there you go. Lovely little mirror, probably one of the stockies. Yeah, oh, one of three now. So, pleased with that. Managed to nick one out right towards the death. So, I can't see getting another one now. Still got a couple of rods in the water, but nearly packed up. But, yeah, what a result. Probably mid double. I'm not going to bother weighing him. But, yeah, one of three, all caught on the half withy. So, it's been a proper result over here because I know it's not been fishing that easy. Uh, yeah, it's been a really enjoyable, really good session, to be honest. And, uh, yeah, the rods are still in the water, so there's a small chance, but I've got about half hour left now, and then I'll be away. So I'm gonna slip this one back, get packed up, and get going on. That'll do. Hey, session over.